Good morning, everybody. Welcome to an episode. <laughs> Welcome to an episode. Welcome to episode seven. That's right. Episode seven. You are listening to Freight Be Moving All Things Logistics with me, Jewel Williams, where we are talking about tech and all things that are reshaping the transportation and logistics landscape this whole week i'm saving the big kahuna for tomorrow and i'll let you know at the end of the episode what the big kahuna will be on this episode i am talking about three today i am talking about flexport today i am talking about rxo today and i am talking about ch robinson today we're going to dig in a little bit on these three companies find out how they are influencing, shaping, and reshaping the transportation and logistics landscape when it comes to the supply chain, tracking and tracing, and adding visibility to customers where they want it. So as you know, all this week we've been discussing this and lots of good little nuggets have been coming up. I know you guys have been enjoying this. I see you engaging with me and I wanna thank everybody, everybody that has been engaging with my post, who've been listening to my posts, watching my videos, and supporting my show, I definitely, definitely appreciate it. More big things to come on this show right here. We are making moves. And Monday, Monday, I have a really big announcement. I have a very big announcement. And if you're a small business owner, if you are a truck driver, you know what? Everybody just get in on here and listen because it's coming Monday. So. All right, so let's get into this. Let's do an update real quick on whew, Wall Street Journal. I'm a big fan of the Wall Street Journal. I'm also a big fan of the Journal of Commerce. So you will hear me reading a lot of stories. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Paul Page because he's I follow him all the time. So anyway, uh, this is coming off of Paul Page uh, wrote this article. And this article is an update. Supply chain tech provider Project 44 delays potential public offering. Startup gets backing from Generation Sustainable Investment Fund in a new round valuing its business at $2.7 billion with a B. Yep, billion. All right, so what do we got going on here with this? Now, this came out November 3rd today. This is Fred off fresh, fresh fresh off the presses at 6 30 a.m so what the article says is supply chain technology provider project 44 has postponed plans for a possible public stock offering amid the uncertainty in markets and instead is turning to more venture capital investment to expand its business tracking goods through global transportation networks chicago-based project 44 one of an array of supply chain software startups that have drawn billions of dollars in investments in recent years, announced $80 million in new backing on Thursday and a funding round that values the company at $2.7 billion. The backing was led by Generation Investment Management LLP, a London-based sustainable investment firm whose founders include former U.S. Vice President Al Gore and AP Molding Holding a financing arm of the owners of Danish shipping giant AP Muller Maersk AS. The new cash flows, excuse me, the new cash follows a $420 million funding round in January that valued Project 44 at $2.2 billion and a $202 million round less than a year earlier that had, ex that had executives looking at potential initial public stock offering in a hot market for supply chain technology firms. Wow, that is a lot of money floating around, lots of money floating around. All right, so the appetite for public offerings has collapsed this year. However, as the global economy stumbles towards a possible recession amid high inflation, upheaval from Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and receding consumer demand, the IPO market is on track for its worst year in decades. And technology companies that pitch themselves as critical tools to make sense of supply chain disruptions 
may find less demand now that the bottlenecks are easing. Digital matching startup Transfix Inc., for instance, last month canceled its plans to go public through a merger with a special purpose acquisition company saying it will instead seek another round of venture capital funding. Funding for supply chain technology startups has also trapped tapered, excuse me, has also tapered off this year. According to analytics from PitchBook Data Inc., as venture capital firms have reined in deal making, venture capital firms invested 8.6 billion in the sector in the second quarter, down nearly 40% from both the first quarter and the second quarter in 2021. Jet McCandles, founder and chief executive of Project 44, said about 200 million of this January round went towards buying out early round investors rather than towards working capital. A process, he says, prepares the company for a longer term outlook. You want to get the capital, excuse me, you want to, you want to get the early capital off so you have long term investors as you go toward the next milestone, he says. Mr. McCandless said Project 44, I believe that was a typo, but anyway, Mr. McCandless says Project 44 can continue to expand without going to the public markets over the next couple of years based on its existing investment and cash flow. We have enough capital on our balance sheet without go doing an IPO to grow while continuing to innovate. We can still have incredible investments in innovation and be competitive and be in charge of our destiny. So it goes on and on and on and on and on some more. Um, one particular down here, I wanted to, um, to highlight the role of generation investment management highlights a growing focus on project 44 on sustainable st sustainability as supply chain bottlenecks clear up and the role of what the company calls its visibility software and addressing disruption becomes less pressing. About 35% of our revenue comes from Europe. Sustainability is top of mind for them, particularly scope three emissions. Mr. Canalis said scope three emissions are those produced by contract suppliers and a company's supply chain. Mr. Canalis said project 44 tracking information can provide detailed data on the movements of ships carrying a company's goods that contribute to carbon emissions. Also, a uh, French France based shipping line, CMA CGMSA also invested in project 44 for the first time joining existing investors, Goldman Sachs asset management, TPG Inc emergence capital partners, Chicago ventures, Sapphire ventures, eight VC Sozo ventures and Adam Miri technology ventures. Lots of money, lots of money. That's all I hear. I hear a bunch of change dropping. Ching, 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 ching. Where does that, why does that have any value? It has a lot of value because Project 44 is registered on the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration website, Safer Web. So that means they are a broker and as a broker when they broker freight as most of you know when you broker freight you sometimes have to pay the driver before you get paid by the customer with all that kind of money they can pay the driver and still be cash ready and they don't have to depend on a factoring company that takes 2.5 percent or more just so you know also, they eliminate a middleman, middleman. What's a middleman, middleman? To me, a middleman, middleman is a dispatcher. That's a middleman, middleman. A dispatcher is somebody that is not working for a company. They're independent. They are usually working with truck drivers or other carriers. And what they do is they, they sell their services to those carriers as somebody that can help them find the business and help them uh, source, help them source freight. And what that usually looks like is that they go on load boards and they source the freight. Now, 
that dispatcher legally cannot take possession of that freight because they are not a licensed broker. However, how they sell their services to the truck drivers, they say, I'm just basically being your eyes and ears and I'm helping you communicate to the broker so you can just continue to drive. Because, you know, most drivers don't have time to be communicating as they're moving down the road. They don't have the time to be doing that. And a lot of them don't need to be doing it. They need to be focused on the road. So a dispatch will sell their services such as that. But well, freight brokers can do the same thing. But many freight brokers decide that they just want to be on one side or the other. They're either going to be on the shipper side or they're going to be on the driver's side. Nine times out of 10, most freight brokers are on the shipper side because the shippers are the one that have the freight. However, the freight can't move without the driver. So you see the conundrum? Yeah, it's quite interesting. So what my point, what the whole story is, is that Project 44 is registered as a freight broker on Safer Web. Therefore, they can broker freight. If you don't know, Amazon is also a freight broker. Yep. Walmart, freight broker. Any of these companies that have trucks, nine times out of 10, they have a brokerage arm. And according to the Federal Motor Carrier Association, you have to be two separate entities. So if you want to be a carrier on this side, you have to sign up as a carrier authority. If you want to be a freight broker, you have to sign up as a freight broker authority. So many of these companies have both so that they can talk to each other. Look it up. If you don't believe me, all you got to do is go on saferfmcsa.gov and that's safer.fmcsa.dot.gov and look up their name and you will see Amazon is a freight broker and a carrier. Walmart freight broker carrier project 44 freight broker and we're going to move on to Flexport that is also registered as a freight broker these people have deep pockets to make transactions happen in ways that independent freight brokers don't and that is reshaping how this whole market is working and drivers who may not know this may be getting taken advantage of that's just my thoughts okay so who is flexport who are these people well what drew me i've been i've actually been following flexport for a while because i am very interested in the fact that any tech company that can track freight all around the world uh, I find that to be admirable and as I'm a firm believer of working smarter, not harder. And, um, that's where technology comes in. So I first got this, uh, article. This is out of Reuters, Reuters by Crystal Hugh. And this came out November 2nd, 2022. And this is the headline logistics startup Flexport plans hiring spree to double engineers in 2023. That means they are wanting to grow. So November 2nd, it says Flexport, one of the most valuable logistics startups is looking to add about 400 engineers to double its technical team by next year. A top company executive told Reuters. Hiring spree spearheaded by Dave Clark, who joined Flexport in September. That was not too long ago. After two decades at Amazon. Let me repeat that. Dave Clark, who joined Flexport in September after two decades with Amazon. Do you know how much knowledge is transporting over there? Phenomenal. So he comes at a time when many big tech companies and venture capital backed startups are either freezing hiring or laying off employees amid economic uncertainty. Clark, former consumer chief at Amazon and now co-chief executive at Flexport said the firm is taking advantage of its strong balance sheet and the less competitive job market for tech talents. Flexport raised $935 million led by venture capital firms Ander C Ander excuse me Andreessen Horwitz and MSD Partners earlier this year at a valuation of 8 
$1.5 billion. It expects revenue of close to $5 billion this year. Recruiting has been very challenging for the last couple of years, and we think this is the ex exact great opportunity for us to go out and start hiring and give people an opportunity to do a reset in their career, said Clark. Founded in 2013 by Ryan Peterson, Flexport enables buyers, sellers, and their logistics partners to ship, store, and trade goods on its digital platform. It has experienced rapid growth amid the pandemic, led global supply chain disruptions. The expanded team will work on building the core product and improve the tracking system and add more automation to the platform. Digitization in the freight industry has been underway for years with capital flooding into freight forwarders like Flexport. But the expense of upgrading legacy databases with digital tracking systems has slowed transition. Clark said the tech openings from entry level to experienced ones will be across the U.S. with a focus on Bellevue, Washington, a tech town that houses Amazon and Microsoft. Hey, Bellevue, used to be up there. How you be? Flexport currently has over 3,200 employees across the world and now has a hybrid work policy requiring employees to work for two to three days in the office. They're getting monies. They're growing. They are growing. Now on their website, they highlight one of their customers, Georgia Pacific and it talks about how Georgia Pacific gains data-driven visibility and process efficiency with Flexport. So here's the numbers, 60 users globally across production, sales, customer service, and logistics, 45,000 emails reduced per year, about six per shipment, and 100% on-time customs filing. Now, I used to work in customs brokerage, and I know that sounds good to me because I used to spend hours in the copier room copying custom brokerage paperwork. So for them to be able to reduce that is phenomenal. So a paper products leader powers digital transformation and customer experience. So they highlight the GP Cellulose Georgia Pacific's packaging and cellulose business produces paper pulp materials for a wide range of products such as baby diapers, feminine hygiene products, and medical gauze, among others. GP Cellulose operates four world-class wood pulp mills in the southeastern United States and serves customers in more than 75 countries globally. Georgia Pacific is the number two exporter in North America, with GP Cellulose accounting for approximately 80% of its export shipments. Now, the highlight of that sentence, of that paragraph right there, was what GP Cellulose produces. Baby diapers, women and hygiene products, medical gauzes. Three things that were part of the critical need in the pandemic and are used daily in hospitals. Let's just, babies are born. These things have got to continue to be made. So if there is any glitch in that system, if any tractor or trailer incident messes up the flow of those goods, there are several issues, ripple effects that are just going to spread out in that whole supply chain. So the importance of having sight visibility on their freight is essential. It's critical. It's a must. And that's why companies like Flexport and Project 44 and uh, Shipio are coming in and redesigning what what is currently the standard or traditional way of doing transportation and logistics. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. So the last part of this, which I thought was interesting, is Flexport has spent a lot of time understanding our current processes and helping to design better processes for the future. They have a platform that allows us to stay completely up to speed on the status of our orders. They, allow, they have a platform 
that allows us to stay completely up to speed on the status of our orders. Flexport has brought a different view of how to solve our international shipments and revolutionize the way we automate our communications. Revolutionize the way we automate our communications. Told you, communications, they, they go hand in hand. Communicate, freight, brother and sister, cousins. So what this is showing me is again, big money has a, has a vested interest in making sure that these platforms come up to speed, that they dominate the market. Now that doesn't say that there's no room for small business. There's, there is room. However, you have to know your competition. You have to know all the pieces of this puzzle that are impacting and influencing our business. And I'll read you something later on from CH Robinson. that will help you understand that. So in moving forward, I told you I was talking about Flexport, RXO and CH Robinson. And I have something here. I printed off all the information I receive is public knowledge. At no time do I ever have to steal anything. So if you know how to search the web, and you know how to search the databases, you can have all this knowledge too for free, for free. So I say this because a lot of people are probably going to gape when I read what I'm reading and wonder how did she get that information? How is, whose, whose computer did she break into? Nobody's. All right. So company overview, we are talking about RXO. Who is RXO? Who is RXO? RXO is a high performing brokered transportation platform defined by cutting edge technology and a nimble asset light business model with the largest component being our core truck brokerage business. We are the fourth largest broker of full truckload freight transportation in the United States with approximately 4% share of the entire 88 billion brokerage truckload industry in 2021. Over 80% of our operating income in 2021 was generated by the truck brokerage. The remainder was compromised, or excuse me, was comprised of our brokerage, our brokerage services for managed transportation, last mile and freight forwarding. RxO is led by Drew Wilkerson, Chief Executive Officer, and Jamie Harris, Chief Financial Officer. These executives have deep experience in their respective fields, having precisely served in senior roles with industry leaders. Our truck brokerage business has a variable cost structure with robust free cash flow conversion and a long track record of generating a high return on invested capital. Shippers create demand for our service and we place their freight with qualified independent carriers using our technology. We price our service on either a contract or a spot basis. Notable factors driving growth and margin expansion in our business include our ability to access massive truckload capability, excuse me, capacity for shippers through our carriers relationships, a proprietary cutting edge technology, our strong management expertise and favorable industry tailwinds. As of January, as of June 30th, 2022, correction, June 30th, 2022, we had approximately 98,000 carriers in North American truck brokerage network and access to over one and a half million trucks. We provide our customers with highly efficient access to capacity through our RxO Connect trademark digital brokerage technology. This proprietary platform is a major differentiator for our truck brokerage business and together with our price technology, we believe it can unlock incremental profitable growth well beyond our current levels. All of our services utilize our proprietary platforms. In 2021, we generated 4.7 billion of revenue, which they point to the summary. Now, another piece of this that is important is the proprietary technology and what they claim about this proprietary technology. Excuse me. We believe we are strongly differentiated by our technology as a leading innovator of sophisticated brokerage solutions that enhance visibility, reliability, speed, accuracy, and cost effectiveness. And by the fully automated 
transactional capabilities of our digital platforms as more and more shippers outsource their road freight needs to brokers they increasingly prefer brokers that have the digital capabilities we offer so this company rxo is actually a spin-off of the company xpo logistics all public knowledge if you were watching this earlier this week xpo was ringing the bell uh, on the stock market due to this wonderful separation that they have full disclosure at once upon a time i was a driver for xpo logistics i terminated that relationship a few months ago so moving forward ch robinson now let's talk about ch robinson ch robinson is the considered the number one freight forwarder broker 3pl right now as it stands they are the number one they stretch they stretch let me see if i can get my arms out here all over the place they have got canada mexico europe and asia that's ch robinson and they build their relationships through partnerships and and things like that but the one thing and they had a, a talk too uh here today in regard of some of the things that are impacting their company now ch robinson has been building a digital platform for quite some time now if you go onto the website you'll see that there's a couple of options if you're one of their customers that you can sign up for their nav and all this other kind of stuff and i've known about ch robinson for years i mean when i was in brokerage i remember them and um, they're continuing to grow they're continuing to grow but they have a little bit more competition now with the flex ports and the project 44s and there's still more room for competition but if you're going to be competing you're going to have to come up with some capital and you're going to have to bring in some good technology and things like that and next week next week i'm just going to foreshadow for you here a little bit next week i'm going to be making a big announcement on monday in addition uh next week i'm going to be talking more about some of the tools that smaller brokers can possibly utilize to help leverage their relationships to help provide their customers with more information and to help stay out of trouble you need to you need to do your due diligence when you're dealing with truck drivers and slow your roll slow down when you get the opportunity to quote freight and we'll talk about that more later on but i wanted to read this um as far as ch robinson goes um there's not a lot to report on them as they have been in this industry for a while so they're really being impacted but what's what's interesting with this piece of information and i pulled this off of their report that they sent to the securities and exchange commission so if you're unaware the securities and exchange commission they are the legal arm that governs any publicly traded organization and every company that files or trades on the stock market files what's called a form 10q and that form is what i'm reading from and i've been knowing about this stuff because i invest in everything but that's another story anyway I, i'm full disclosing because i don't want anyone to think uh, uh, you know i'm stealing somebody's information it's all public knowledge okay so the risk when you are making a strategy when you are strategizing your business it is important to understand all the risk associated with it and i say this because when you're coming in as a driver or you're coming in as a freight broker or you're coming in any part of any industry even if you're going to be selling online with your um products and services If you're going to sell online through Amazon, if you're going to sell online through eBay, if you're going to open a brick and mortar store and sell t-shirts, whatever you do, you must consider the risk that will impact your business. All money has a risk attached to it. It just does. The risk of losing it. That's the risk. That's the attachment. It's the risk of losing it. So, as a 
Smart business person understand the risk associated with your industry, with your business. And that's not to say that you shouldn't be in business, but it is to say that in order for you to make strategic moves and plan, you have to understand your risk. And when you understand your risk, you'll understand the risk of suppliers and shippers. You'll understand how your partners have risk when they pass off freight to you and they don't see it. It's more than just taking a uh, taking possession and looking at that final dollar of $5,000 or how much money, money you're going to get. You've got to pay attention to the risk. So I wanted to read this because CH Robinson does an excellent job, excellent, excellent job at, at just summarizing all of the risk that they, that could potentially impact and affect their business. They follow up as this risk that could cause actual results to differ materially from our current expectations include, but are not limited to changes in economic conditions, including uncertain consumer demand, changes in the market demand and pressures on pricing for our services, fuel price increases or decreases or fuel shortages, competition and growth rates within the global logistics industry freight levels and increasing cost and availability of truck capacity or alternative means of transportate transporting freight risk associated with significant disruptions in the transportation industry changes in relationships with existing contracted truck rail ocean and air carriers changes in our customer base due to possible consolidation among our customers risk with reliance on technology to operate our business, cybersecurity related risk, risk associated with operations outside of the United States, our ability to identify or complete suitable acquisitions, our ability to successfully integrate the operations of acquired companies with our historic operations, risk associated with litigation, including contingent auto liability and insurance coverage, risk associated with the potential of impact changes in government regulations, our ability to hire and retain a sufficient number of qualified personnel, risk associated with the changes to income tax regulations, risk associated with the pro produce industry, including food safety and contamination issues, the impact of the war on the economy, changes to our capital structure, changes due to catastrophic events, including pandemics, such as COVID-19 and other risks and uncertainties detailed in our annual and quarterly reports. Now you're not on CH Robinson, neither am I. However, many of the risks that they list here in their report are risks that all of us, all of us in business have. Some are greater than others. As a small freight forwarder, you have a, a gigantic risk because if you are a one and only uh, single owner operator, or if you're just that one man show, yes, you're an LLC and the life of your business can live beyond you. However, once you're gone, then there's nothing else there. And so organizations have to consider that when they're doing business with you. So, it's important to just understand all of these elements that are associated with how you can be profitable in your business and how you can be successful in your business. Understand the risks that are associated. It's more than just making a good rate structure. It's more than just going out here and making 10, 20 phone calls in a day and saying, Hey, you got some freight, you got some freight, you got some freight. You have to understand the entire picture of the business element. You are a business. You are operating a business. And if you want to compete in this business market, you must put on the businessman hat and be strategic, be critical and know what landscape you're working in. Don't bring a shovel when you actually need a rake. Okay. That's, that's it. If, if that's what you need, then that's what you bring. 
but you but you probably want to have all the tools because you might know you, you you might not know if you need that rake when you show up to the person to do the job and what you need to do on the landscape i'm using the metaphor because it just came to mind so tomorrow i'm gonna dig into uber freight uber technologies i like singing that uber so anyway i'm digging into uber tomorrow that's all it's gonna be about uber i saved that for last because it was such a gigantuan and a lot of people don't realize what uber's all about uber's more than just your friendly car taxi self-serve platform uber got a whole lot going on so we're gonna dig into uber tomorrow remember if you're driving be safe i don't care if you're in a four-wheeler or an 18 wheeler we all got to share the road and be safe all right peace and love see you tomorrow bye